Big crowd. Good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome to the regular monthly meeting of the Board of Commissioners held for the purpose of transacting the general business of the township. Today's date is October 10, 2018. The meeting is being held in the Springfield Township Building. Please stand and join the Board of Commissioners in a moment of silent reflection, honoring the servicemen and women who've placed themselves in harm's way in order to help preserve our safety. Thank you. Please remain standing and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At this point, I would entertain a motion dispensing with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting as written and recorded in the official minute book of the township. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Please record a unanimous vote. We are in full complement tonight up here. I have one announcement. The Board of Commissioners conducted an executive session meeting on October 8th following the regularly scheduled workshop meeting on that date to discuss two personnel matters and one matter of potential litigation. Later this evening, the Board of Commissioners will conduct a public hearing on a zoning code amendment related to no impact home based businesses in residential zoning districts. Any questions or comments related to the zoning code amendment should be held until the public hearing is conducted. Um, at this point, we're at the public portion of the meeting. The board is now open to comments or questions from the public. The board draws particular attention to those items listed on the agenda this evening. Please be advised that once the committee reports begin, the board can no longer accept questions from the floor. At the conclusion of the committee reports, public comments will once again be accepted. However, official action on those issues listed on the agenda will have already taken place. Therefore, if you wish to comment on an agenda item, now would be the appropriate time. Should this be green? Or is that? No, yeah, that's good. Okay. Good Sorry. Evening, honorable commissioners and, uh, and Sir President. Uh, I have uh, two public comments. One is on uh, item number 10 and 11. Mm -hmm. My name is uh, Giuseppe, G I U S E E P E, Monticelli. M-O-N-T-I-C-E-L-L-I, -L -L -I, Edan Road, Ward 72, uh, on Mall, Graham's Ward. Uh, my first public comment would be on the uh, speed pump experiment here. Mm -hmm. And that would personally be, I am in favor of it, but the problem I see here is uh, I really would wish that other avenues were tried out before it would have to get to this point. Uh, that being uh, being mentioned of maybe the crime control uh, process of maybe setting up an officer at the at the Flower Town Acme shopping lot, or quite frankly, the firehouse uh, right, that's right across from Wise Road. That could have been done. That's a crime control process, you know. Uh, then you also have the due process uh, thing that could be done. You know, easily tickets could have been handed out and stuff like that. Uh, I know it takes up valuable resources, but it only takes one officer. It really makes me lead to believe that this option was not explored. Uh, at least that's my understanding. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, my second opinion uh, will comment tonight would be on agenda item number 10. <clears throat> I'm glad the department found a probationary officer. I hope this officer most likely went through the civil service test and had outstanding um, outstanding scores on that civil service test. I really hope that. I really hope that this, uh, that this officer is being hired by meeting all statutory requirements. 
And I uh, wish that officer best of luck if he is going to be uh, voted in tonight. Uh, no objection with that. Greatly appreciate it. The only thing I would uh, question that is why doesn't our officer need to join the force when we already have about 30 on the force? That's uh, all my public comment tonight on the agenda items. Thank you, Great. Sir President. Thank you very much. And just to be clear, those um, the officer will be replacing with a slot. We're not increasing the size of the police force. What, what is the size of the police force right now? 30? Yes. 30, 30 okay. which is basically what it's been for 40 years. We keep it where it is. And that includes okay. the detectives and the supervisors okay. and whatnot. A any response on um, item number 11 on the experiment there of the speed bumps? Well, that's something that we... What was that experiment done? Oh, well, yeah, was, there was... I mean, no, I've heard, yeah, about, te yeah, I've, I've heard about the test of right. having how many cars of the thousand each day, but really, you know, the survey could have been done on if the... Yeah, yeah, the crime control process of writing up tickets, of saying they're we've, doing We've done up. that, yes. We've done And what was the results? The, I don't know the specific results. I do know that, as you know from the speed test, the speed, since we're not allowed to enforce until they're 10 miles above yeah. the speed limit, there were very few that were there. So enforcement probably yielded very few. Plus, okay. enforcement doesn't even get that many because they, the policeman doesn't always able to hide that well because we're not allowed uh -huh. to use radar so they get seen and they slow down but that doesn't mean you don't do it they don't use speed radar here well, and it's against the law for local police to use radar in Pennsylvania in Pennsylvania uh, for in Pennsylvania in, it's against the law to and use the whole state or in the whole state for local municipalities the for state no okay police, for local state police right. are the only ones allowed to use it Okay, did not know that fact. Thank you. That's a sure. conclusion of my We'd comment. be happy to talk to you about that because we'd love to change it. Um, the fear on it, and I understand it, is that townships will just use it to print money, you know, to just, just give tickets to everybody. Yeah, and you and know what? And you know that's that? not what we, we uh -huh. don't actually get uh -huh. that much money from the yeah. tickets, but uh -huh. we, we want people to drive safely. And that's why the states tried to come up with mechanisms where they allow it, but if your fines go way up, you can't keep it, just to, so you don't mm -hmm. create a perverse and Senate. Mm -hmm. How long has I been around with that act? Forever. Okay. Forever? Yeah. Long years? Yeah. And I'm glad, I'm glad that's in there because that kind of present, uh, prevents uh, a, a type of situation that I call as revenue generation from happening, Correct. but I'm glad that's in force. Thank it you. has gotten better from our point of view in that we've gotten more tools we can <clears throat> use, but radar is not one of them. Okay. Thank you. So, Conclusion. Yeah, thanks, thanks for your comments. Thank you. Do we have any other public comment? Chief. Please state your name and address. Jim Gordon, 106 Olmar Avenue, uh, Chairman of STEMS Committee, uh, Fire Chief to Run Fire Company, and I'm here about the speed bumps that you guys want to put in on Weiss Avenue. Um, as you know, and I'm sure you've been told, uh, you know, by our liaison that the STEMS is adamantly against any type of speed bump. Um, creates a safety issue with fire trucks going over it, um, with equipment on the trucks and things like that with people in there. It slows response times. Um, it may not seem like a lot of 10 to 15 seconds, you know, slow down a response time, but a fire doubles in size every 60 seconds. So it could be catastrophic to the person sitting in the fire. Um, there's other avenues you can explore. Um, you know, you can put rumble strips on the street. Um, you know, but I think before you guys do anything and before, because this was never brought up to us that this was going in here in the STEMS meeting, you know, you should be coming to us and discussing this with us before, you know, this goes on. Um, when you go, you know, if you Google speed humps and fire truck safety, there's tons of articles from all over the country of emergency services, you know, are totally against this because of this. So I would say don't put it in there. It's a bad idea. But if you do put it in there, any type of device you have, you should be consulting with STEMS before you do that. Great. And that's all I got. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can I just yeah. make, just a point of clarity, Jim? So uh, the STEMS meeting and it not being brought up that it had advanced this far Correct. was my fault. Uh, I am the co-chairman of the public of emergency management, and I also was aware that this was being talked about. So I apologize for that. And and but I will, second to yeah, that. Go ahead. Second to that, we had already received a letter from STEMS Correct. saying they were not in favor of speed bombs. Correct. We brought that up to the group and in reinforce that position for STEM. 
So even though we didn't bring up the specific, yes, Weiss Avenue is going to be a test project or that's what, the, the, that's what was tentatively happening, sure. but we did bring up STEM's concern about speed bumps okay. all, along, all along through the process. So there's got to be some other, again, if you Google this, and I did it 10 minutes before I got here, you know, there's other, you know, quote unquote traffic coming devices that you can use before you come with a, you know, with a bump that's actually, I mean, a car can go over bumps, you know, they're designed to, to absorb, you know, so you're right, you can't even feel it, but designed to absorb more. A truck suspension, you know, I don't know who's ridden the truck, but it shoots you right out of the seat with a bump like that. And I don't care if you're going five miles an hour, 10 miles an hour, I don't care what it is, it jumps you out of the seat. You know, you got those loads in the back of that truck, they come loose, you know. Imagine yourself in an ambulance, many of the ambulance guys going in there, you know, quote unquote, they're supposed to be doubled in, but you're working on somebody going somewhere. You know, imagine driving over that, and plus the guy laying in the seat, you know, with a broken leg or whatever. So, yep. there's, there's just tons of things I think they can explore versus putting some sort of, you know, vertical yep. device or something in there. Thank you. You're not getting your best side on TV right now, by the way. <laughs> you have Royce Frantic back there. So, George, don't do it from the aisle. <laughs> George Wilmot, 407 Pennock Road, uh, Flower Town. Uh, also here representing STEMS and also Flower Town Fire Company. Basically, uh, reiterate what Jim said as far as STEMS board. Um, you know, they're, they're just a bad idea. Um, personally, I think. Once you put one in as a test, it's going to stay. Uh, you know, what are the parameters of the test? Is the parameters set as to what you're going to look at later on down the road in six months that this test is going to prove or disprove? Uh, once this speed hump goes in there, I can tell you everybody else in Springfield is going to be sitting here going, I want one on my road. I want one on my road. Let me be the first one to say, I want one on Pen Oak Road. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if this test goes through and it's there, you're going to have speed humps all over the township. You know, and snow plow. I, I don't snow plow big roads like this, but little roads. What are they going to do to the guy's snow plow? It's going to tear the plows right off the front of the trucks. You know, there's just, I think there's just a lot of other, um, like, like, moon, I'm sorry, Jim. <laughs> Jim said, uh, you know, there's other options, I think. Um, you know, do other townships, has anybody gone to other townships and asked what you use, what they've used? And if so, what are the townships? I'd like to personally reach out to the to their chiefs of their area and see what they've done in their area, uh, what their answer is, if they're using them, how, how it affects them in their area. Uh, so if there's been townships looked at, you know, please f forward them on so we can look at them as, as far as a fire standpoint. Um, but from a personal level, I just think once you put one in as a test, if there's parameters set up, great. If there's not, maybe we should look at parameters to see what this test does <coughs> and somehow figure out how you're going to stop it throughout the whole township. Right. Thank you, George. Do we have any other public comment at this point? Okay. There being none, we will move on to the committee reports. And so there will be two more public comment. There will be the general public comment at the end, and then the last item on the agenda, which is the zoning code amendment. The way that works is there's a little bit of sleight of hand here. We have to hold a separate hearing for that. This is, and this will be very quick, but when we get to that item, we will suspend the current meeting and we will open the hearing, and then I'll read a one-page summary, and then people will have yet another chance if they want to comment on that, and the board will have another chance to comment on that, which probably will be really short because it's kind of a technical amendment. Um, and then we will close that hearing. This is all sort of a two-minute thing. We will close the hearing and then go back into our meeting, at which point we will probably have one motion, which would be to approve that zoning code because we have to do that in the regular meeting, and then we would have the final public comment. So this, after we get past item 13, there's going to be some shuffling around, although it will be quick, I suspect, based on the amount of comments we've had so far, which I think is none on this um, that particular matter. So that said, uh, we'll move on, and I start out as the Chairman of the Internal Affairs and Library Committee. The first matter is the October bill listing, and I move that the Board of Commissioners approve the September check reconciliation in the amount of $702,598.73, and the October bill listing in the amount of $1,628,424.21. That's my motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any questions or comments? 
All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Please record a unanimous vote. The second is our budget meeting schedule. The budget will be presented to the board a week from today, which is the 17th of October in this room at seven o'clock. It will be officially presented at our next business meeting, which uh, will be on November 14th at 7.30 in this room. And then the hear final hearing and the adoption will be at the December meeting, which is December 12th at 7.30 in this room. Um, and this room is the Springfield Township building for those watching on television. Uh, that's item number two. Number three, resolution 1459. I move that the Board of Commissioners adopt resolution number 1459, a resolution distributing the annual state allocation of the Springfield Township Municipal <coughs> Pension Plans in compliance with Pennsylvania Act 205 of 1984, the Municipal Pension Funding Standard and Recovery Act. Under date of September 30th, 2018, the Township received state pension fund aid in the amount of $435 $5,648.13, which will be distributed into the three township pension plans, utilizing a formula provided by the township pension fund administrator. That is my motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any questions or comments? I have a question. Yes. Um, with this contribution, do we have an idea of what, uh, what percent uh, 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 we have funded these pension liabilities, um, have, we, have we funded, uh, yeah, would we? this represent the funding of 80% 80, 80 of our pension uh, liabilities, 60%? No. The market went down 800 points today, so yeah. it, 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 we were told. It changes yeah. constantly. Well, the, the, the valuation will be done at the end of this year. Okay. <laughs> but we do we have any ballpark as to what the... Um, I think it's gone up since it was at 80, because the market's gone up. Yeah. Okay. And these are st sort of statutory, we haven't stopped contributing to it. At some point, once it goes up, it will probably not this year's, the budget we're about to start on, but in next year's budget, we might get some relief if the market stays mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. I just bring this up because it seems as if we're having, we're going to have a, a significant number of employees retiring shortly. Okay, thank you. Any other questions and comments? All, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Please record a unanimous vote. Uh, and now about the Library Advisory Committee. Uh, I move that the Board of Commissioners accept a letter dated September 6, 2018 from Ramona Salati, resigning her position as a member of the Library Advisory Committee effected December 31, 2018. Ms. Salati served on the committee for 11 years, mm. and during that time she also served as the chairperson of the Advisory Committee for several years. Ms. Salati was an active participant in the design and opening of the new Free Library of Springfield Township, which opened in January 2018. Uh, that is my motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any questions or comment? I just have one comment, Mr. President. I yes. had the pleasure when I was uh, serving as the liaison to uh, serve with Ramona, and um, uh, she just d consist consistently did a wonderful job uh, on the committee, and uh, uh, I'm sure her presence uh, will be missed. Thank you. I certainly share that. Having been on the committee, I'm not real thrilled that she her letters dated. I think the day that I got reassigned to that <laughs> committee, but I will take that up with her. Hmm. Um, any other questions and comments? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Please record a unanimous vote. Moving on to the item number five, our township auditors. I move that the Board of Commissioners reappoint B. Bergvall and Company, certified public accountants, to serve as the Springfield Township Auditors to audit the township's financial statements for the year ending December 31, 2018. Um, consistent with the engagement letter dated September 5th, 2018. The cost of the engagement is $22,900, which is the same fee charged for the 2017 audit. That is my motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Please record a unanimous vote. That concludes my report. We now move on to the Chairman of the Public Works and Facilities Committee, Commissioner Shaw.
Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report this evening. Uh, thank you. I would like to report that paving is going very well throughout the township, and other than a small hiccup with noticing, with some notices on uh, Moreland Avenue, uh, paving's gone perfectly. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I would call on the Chairman of the Community Development Committee, Commissioner Standish. Thank you, Mr. President. This is going to sound like a filibuster tonight, not intentional. So I have three items tonight. And the first one is concerning the Axelrod MPD of Philadelphia subdivision. So the Axelrod subdivision plan is a two lot residential subdivision plan located at 241 Northwestern Avenue. An existing dwelling and detached garage, shed, and associated paving are proposed to be demolished to create two building lots. Each lot will include a single family dwelling, an on lot water well, septic system, and subsurface stormwater management system. I move that the Board of Commissioners approve the preliminary final subdivision and land development plan for Axelrod MPD of Philadelphia LP, prepared by Land Corps Engineering dated March 14, 2018, last October 2, 2018, which consists of a 10 sheet plan set and a stormwater management report prepared by Land Corps Engineering dated March 14, 2018, last revised August 10, 2018. The plan approval includes the following waivers, deferments, or partial waivers to requirements of the subdivision and land development ordinance. One, chapter 995-10A, which requires a 50-foot right-of-way and a minimum 30-foot cartway. The revised plans include the construction of a vehicular refuge area as a part of one of the driveways in lieu of widening the cartway. Number two, chapter 95-10I which requires the installation of a four foot wide sidewalk. This requirement shall be deferred, not waived. Number three, chapter 9511I2 and 9511I2A, related to providing eight street trees along Northwestern Avenue and planting the trees within 15 to 25 feet of the edge of the street pavement. Number four, Chapter 95-11I-8A, the sanitary sewer line on lot number two will be located within the drip line of the existing trees. Number five, chapter 95-11I-8B, a temporary physical barrier to be erected and a minimum of one foot from the drip line on all sides of the vegetation will encroach into the drip line during demolition of the existing dwelling. And number six, chapter 9511I, 11C, the tree replacement schedule will be as set forth on the landscaping plan of this plan set. The plan approval is also subject to and conditioned upon all matters contained in a letter dated August 30th, 2018 from the Office of the Township Engineer to the Zoning Officer being resolved to the satisfaction of the Township Engineer <coughs> prior to the recording of the plans. That is my motion. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second, and then, Peter, were you going to offer an, uh, uh, yes. an amendment? Yes, I'm going to offer okay. an amendment, okay? Uh, I haven't got the ordinance in front of me, in front of me so I can't literally uh, um, uh, recite the uh, actual legal text of the ordinance, but uh, I think the board uh, understands my concerns with re and, and the public uh, should understand my concerns with regard to the, the, the road, Northwestern Avenue, in that section of the township. Anybody who's uh, tried to go down that road, especially re recently or the end of the summer, uh, it, it's basically a one-lane one lane road, um, uh, half of which is in Philadelphia and approximately half of which is in uh, Springfield Township. So uh, I think uh, at the widest part, we probably maybe have 15 feet on both, uh, on, of total cartway. Uh, and I think it presents a real uh, hazard uh, to both uh, the public and our um, uh, uh, firemen and our ambulance drivers and our police and our trash uh, municipal services uh, people who have to use that road every day. There's no way that two cars can pass uh, 
without one of them almost pulling off the off the road. So to uh, to to allow the again the doubling of the density on this lot from from one single family home to two, uh, and uh, without without addressing. Uh, the current conditions of the road, which are, in my opinion, poor, um, uh, is is a mistake. So my amendment would be to um, to uh, on our side, because of course we have no we have no uh, ability to tell uh, Philadelphia what to do. But on our side, to widen the uh, the cartway to the uh, to the uh, uh, current. Um, um, current cartway width, which I think would be uh, uh, not, not, not the, the new right-of-way line, but the old right-of-way line, which is probably another six to, six to eight feet wider than it is now, which would, which would in essence, uh, uh, be about the same width as this proposed uh, little pull-off they're talking about or you know trash collection area that they're talking about on on one of the driveways so uh, I mean that's 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 uh, that's my concern that's uh, my amendment now I don't have it in front of me but last time there was just one that all you needed to officially do to get there is to not to remove one of the waivers right is that work on is not that how we did it last month yeah, so it would be elimination of waiver number one. So your motion, to, I'm restating your motion, is to leave everything Baird said except to remove number one. We'll get us there. And then okay. Baird, you are in a position to accept or reject it. I would recommend that you accept it so that the seven of us can vote on it. Okay. Otherwise, you just All cut right, out. Then. You could cut out democracy, but then he can uh, make another uh, motion. So. Uh, Far be it for me to okay. cut out. Don't so we have an amendment to the motion. Do we need to have a second on the amendment at this point? Okay. Um, do we have a second on the amendment? I'll second it. Okay. Um, Who seconded it? Glenn did. I'll second it. I'm not waiting. Just in the ease. In the so from a procedural standpoint, what we'll do, we can talk more if we want, but I think what we'll do is we will vote on the amended thing, and then if it does not, if you are not in favor of the widening of the road and doing it the way planning you should vote against the amendment and then we'll go back to the original motion which we won't make Baird read again if that be the case okay I point would out you, would you Jeff would you state that one more time please um, I will state it in a minute one more time because I want to discuss it first just okay it's so confusing um, the Planning Commission looked at this prior to last month and they um, approved it with granting that waiver, which keeps the road roughly the, the width that it is. It actually gets a little bigger. And then we deadlocked 3-3 three, three last month. Commissioner Standish wasn't here. So we couldn't resolve it either way, um, which meant nothing passed. We couldn't vote it down and we couldn't vote in favor of it. So then the developer tweaked the plan and created a spot on the edge of it that does actually pull, create a spot for trucks to pull over and for cars to pass, but it's not the whole width. Part of the challenge is there are two power poles in the width, and that's really the biggest expense. There are other issues as to what it does to the plannings, but I think mm -hmm. the power poles are the biggest problem. And um, so that's what was presented to the Planning Commission, who didn't actually have to change their point of view because they'd already approved it. Um, that's, what, that's what the fallback or the, what the first proposal is would be just widening it in one spot. Mm -hmm. But what Peter's requesting is that we widen it the whole length of mm -hmm. the property, with the logic being that as other properties, we do have another one coming up down the street, as other properties come through planning, we could slowly but surely mm -hmm. widen spots on the street. And mm -hmm. as you guys, at least you were there, George, when we went through it with TC 12 years ago, that's been widened, or will be widened for that stretch further up. I don't know if I want to make a comment. You're not, but go ahead. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just uh, nudie. You know, I, I read that real quick and you read the public comment. As far as the fire standpoint, I am completely with Mr. Wilson. And mm -hmm. the biggest problem is, and it's always been, and we're always writing, getting truck to write letters to the, uh, the residents down there, is the trees. Yeah. The trees that get our truck down there are private. Well, I think that's something, regardless of how this works out, we ought to come up with a plan. And what do is a lot of the properties down there, they have gates again. 
we can't get our ladder truck in that road in that industry to say there's not it's not happening. Mm -hmm. But because of the road's not wide enough to make the swing in case that well, I think yes, the worst yes. gate is going to go away because that's getting developed in five homes, or mm -hmm. the, well, they've filed that for that. That makes the worst of the five homes now. Yeah. Down there, Barron Hill is first in over there. Mm -hmm. uh, and they've already put the side of the truck off the wall gates. Yeah. You know, so we just don't need to drive anymore. Yeah. You know, okay. So if the residents realize we can't get it. Well, you'll get that one because that'll be, that'll come to stems. Um, okay. Can I make a comment, please? Yep. Okay. So the uh, the um, the change to the plan, which you just uh, talked about, uh, the widening of the cartway. That it, it, to me, on the plan, it looks like it's a distance of about 20 feet maximum. So this is this is a 224 foot uh, stretch of road. They're talking about it's a consideration widening it to well, what I what I'm recommending to the to the uh, current uh, right-of-way line uh, about 20 or 20, 25 feet, so. Is that right? Okay. Okay, so what, the first vote, you would vote yes if you support the subdivision, and, and this is a what's known as a by-right subdivision, so we have to support it. We don't have to support the waivers. So the first one would be you support the subdivision, but, but you insist that the road, we not grant that waiver and the road be brought to its full width on our side. Um, I think, so that's, that's Peter's amendment. So, so voting yes means they have to go back to the drawing board and, and uh, widen it. Okay, any other questions or comments? So all in favor of basically the widening, um, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed say nay. 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 So I think that was a 4-3 vote. Jonathan, you voted in Aye. favor? Okay, well that's a 4-3 vote. So it's, it's. did you get who it was? It was yes. the three old coots that voted against it. Um, then we don't need a second vote. Um, go ahead, the floor is yours, Baird. Okay. What? So he doesn't have to come back again. I think what he would like to have probably is an approval subject to that change being made. And then he just got it. Uh, because his plans aren't compliant with that. Correct. Yeah. Um, the solicitor has said that we can rework, now that we know how the votes, I didn't know how they were going to fall out. I kind of thought they were going to fall the other way. Um, we would, but didn't we just do that? We just took one waiver away and we approved it. But that's not what the plan shows. Oh, but so because it's the inconsistent with the plan. So how do you want to word it now? He so would just approval I'm subject to the change. Approval subject to that waiver not being granted. So that the widening mm -hmm. in the amendment is accomplished on the plan, and the developer doesn't have okay. to come back here. Second. Okay. Well, I'll make that motion. It doesn't matter. I'll even vote <laughs> for it because you know, we've already we've already lost. So. Okay, so everybody understand this, we're rewording that last vote. Uh, and I'm switching my vote just because we've already decided the answer and now we're, this is just giving you a procedural advantage here. Um, doesn't change my opinion, but. So all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. aye. All opposed, say nay. Uh, please record a unanimous vote. Can I just make one thing? Yes. Here? That means for the developer there are two alternatives. One is to comply and change your plan, or two is to take an appeal. Okay. okay. Baird, you're back for number seven. Can I ask, what, how, what, what, what does an appeal involve? If the failure to grant the um, waiver is deemed unreasonable by a court, then that okay. would be thrown out. All right. Okay. So my next. Uh, uh, subject here is the JWS Gravers LLC subdivision. So the JWS Gravers LLC subdivision is a two lot residential subdivision located at 500 East Gravers Lane. The existing parcel contains 0.61 acres and maintains a 3.5 story dwelling that sustained major fire damage several years ago. The property has remained vacant since the fire on the dwelling is proposed to be demolished as a part of the subdivision plan. Lot number one is proposed, proposed to be 0.32 acres in size and lot number two is proposed to be 0.29 acres in size. 
I move that the Board of Commissioners approve the preliminary slash final subdivision and land development plan for JWS Gravers LLC prepared by Hibbon Engineering Company LLC dated May 4th, 2018, last revised July 26, 2018, which consists of an eight sheet plan set and a stormwater management report prepared by Hibbon Engineering Company LLC dated July 2018. The plan approval is subject to and conditioned upon all matters contained in a letter dated August 30th, 2018 from the Office of the Township Engineer to the Zoning Officer being resolved to the satisfaction of the Township Engineer prior to the recording of the plan. <clears throat> the approval is also subject to the conditioned and conditioned upon matters offered by and agreed to by the principals of JWS Gravers LLC. Those are number one, the plan shall show a turning radiance for a large passenger car or truck delivery truck, excuse me, a large passenger car or delivery truck on both driveways. Number two, existing trees that are incorporated into the landscaping plan shall be evaluated for viability by an ISA certified arborist. The owner will actively maintain the property to make sure vegetation is cut at all times and the existing building is secured by before demolition. That was number three. Number four, the existing house that was damaged by fire shall be demolition, excuse me, shall be demolished within 120 days of the date of the approval of the subdivision land development plan. And number five, photographic documentation of the existing building will be coordinated with either the Chestnut Hill Conservancy or the Springfield Township Historical Society before the building is demolished. So that is my motion. We have a motion, do we have a second? Second. Um, I have one comment and it applies to both this one and the one before and to a lesser extent the next one. These, all three of these subdivisions are what are known as by right subdivisions, which mean they are, um, the lot, the two lots they're creating out of one are totally compliant with the zoning. So we are in a position where we are obligated to accept them because those are their rights. Now what you saw in the first one was, they come with these waivers attached, which tend to be pretty minor. They have to do with the number of trees they replant or sometimes even more minor things like things they don't want to show on the plan because it's just too much surveying work. Um, as you saw, we, we did not grant a waiver on the last one, so we did approve it, but we approved it with one less waiver than the Planning Commission recommended and that they were expecting. Um, I bring that up now because there's been some agitation in the neighborhood that this house shouldn't be subdivided, they should figure out a way to keep it, and this subdivision and tearing down the house is entirely within their, their rights, it's not in our position to stop it, and frankly, as someone who lives a couple houses away, I think it's the right outcome for the house because um, the developer tried to figure out a way to make it work and it just, the numbers don't add up. Um, so the bottom line is on these sub the net the third one that's coming up is not we're not deciding it tonight but it's the same thing the, we're not the zoning board we're not in a position to say oh we don't like this this is too much these are these are their rights to get it passed that it's only the waivers we can tinker with so uh, and I don't think any of them are contested at this point are there any other questions or comments uh, just one question uh, mr. president will the demolition once this is approved would the demolition uh, be 120 days from today or from 120 days written notice given to the contractor? That's today, isn't it? We discussed yeah. this Monday night. Yeah. I just yeah. wanted to be clear. It's today. The motion it reads from the, from the plan approval, which is now. Today? Okay. Right. So unless we deadlock it and it goes to the next month or something, or we vote it down. So we'll know in 30 seconds. Any other questions or comments? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. So yes, Eddie, it is 10 days from today now, Sounds officially. Good. Okay. All right. Baird. Okay, so uh, my third uh, uh, item here is the Heritage Farm 2 subdivision. The Heritage 2 Farm... The Heritage Farms 2 subdivision and land development plan is located at 24-28 Ronald Circle, Orland. The subject of the plan is a three lot residential subdivision. The existing parcel contains 0.553 acres of land. A single family dwelling has already been demolished on the property. So 
I move that the Board of Commissioners accept a letter dated October 4th, 2018 from Michael Bruce, Manager Forest Edge at Coventry LLC, extending the 90-day subdivision and land development plan review period for an additional 90 days in order that the applicant may revise the plans for compliance with the Springfield Township Code. That is my motion. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. So this is just extending it. Yep. Uh, any questions or comments? Uh, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and that concludes my report, Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner Standish. We move to the Chairman of the Cultural and Environmental Resources Committee, Commissioner Wilson. Thank you, Mr. President. I am going to give you the recycling report. During the month of September 2018, Springfield Township residents recycled 189.2 tons of materials with a householder participation rate of 77.5%. The net cost for the month was $17,000. $867.34. That concludes my report. Thank you, Commissioner Wilson. We move to the Chairman of the Parks and Recreation Resources Committee, Commissioner Graham. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report this evening. Thank you, Commissioner Graham. And on to the Co-Chairman of the Public Safety Committee, Commissioner Maxwell. Thank you, Mr. President. I have a couple items this evening. First is a police officer appointment. I move that the Board of Commissioners extend a conditional offer of employment to Zachary H. Sourman, Kent Road, Abington, as a probationary police officer with the Springfield Township Police Department. The conditional officer offer of employment is conditioned upon Mr. Sourman successfully completing PA Act 120 training and passing a medical and psychological examination. The earliest date of employment shall be January 7, 2019. Also, on October 8th, the Board of Commissioners was privileged to interview three candidates to fill one vacancy within the Township Police Department. The Board looks forward to working with Mr. Sourman for many years to come. That is my motion. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. second. Any questions or comments? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Please record a unanimous vote. Uh, next item is the speed hump experiment. Uh, before I read this, Jim and... George and Franny, I'd also like to apologize for not bringing this to your attention at the, the last STEMS meeting. I move that the Board of Commissioners waive on a temporary basis the policy of the Board of Commissioners that prohibits the installation of speed humps on township streets in order that a speed hump may be installed on Weiss Avenue, Flower Town, for a six month experimental period. At the conclusion of the six month period, the Board of Commissioners will evaluate studies to be performed by the Township Police Department on the success of the speed hump in managing vehicular traffic on Weiss Avenue. That is my motion. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Um, let me start out with a comment here. Uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, I, using my presidential prerogative, was getting frustrated that we were spending an awful lot of time with each meeting with people coming with legitimate concerns about cut through traffic on their streets and wanting speed humps. And we had, we had, ne we, there are none in Springfield, so we'd never said yes. And it's a new group each time and it was taking a lot of time and I said, why don't we take a step back, let's read all the literature, let's talk to the surrounding townships, let's talk to everybody here, let's talk to our insurers, let's talk to PennDOT, let's figure out the legalities of it because there's questions about that. And we really dug into it. We did a lot of research. It went to STEMS, which is our emergency management board. They, all three fire chiefs were opposed to it. The ambulance, which was Springfield at that point, was opposed to it. And that board, which is comprised of them and the police, um, voted it against it. Our police were a little more agnostic about it because I think they're more the administrators of this, that they didn't come out in favor of it. Um, Public Works Department was not in favor of it because it's challenging on the, both the plows and the um, trash trucks who are out a lot more than the plows. We talked to White Marsh Township who has one speed hump which is actually right down the street um, from one of our commissioners, from Commissioner Cobb. They told us, and I'm not sure who they was, but they told us that that's the only one in the township and that they were not happy with it and that they were not going to put any more in. There are other townships that have them, and I don't remember those details. Um, the literature that we read 
kind of went both ways. There was a lot of literature against it, but there were others that say that if nothing else works, they do slow down the cars. But there's the side effect of they also slow down cars, that, the trucks that you may want to get there. Uh, my bias on it, and, and so we passed a policy at that point saying we will not do speed humps. And we thought, well, that will keep it out of these. And then this group was the next group, and they were upset because they weren't a part of that discussion. And they, we didn't issue a report or anything. And so we ended up kind of right back where we were, um, talking about speed humps again. And my concern has always been that it, if thinking, thinking from a resident standpoint, which is where we should always start, it does probably make it safer for the kids, but it doesn't make it safer for the person whose house is on fire. It doesn't make it safer for the person that's in cardiac arrest, because those few seconds could matter. And if they do, do and I will concede, they, slow you, they do slow down the traffic. Now, there were studies that said otherwise that people gun it between the speed bumps and you need more of them out. We don't need to split those hairs. That's what we're trying to test for here. Um, but I don't know how much safer they make it. You know, if somebody's speeding down the street and they hit a speed bump, they're a whole lot more dangerous than if they were just speeding down the street. So that's, and that's not, you can't really research that um, easily. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's my opinion. So I, we, we went through the process. We um, came up with the policy. I'm content with the policy, and I've been pretty clear about that all along. But we agreed to put it up for a vote, and I know there are um, strong opinions on both sides. Uh, the, and the point of this isn't to open the floodgates, which I'm convinced it will eventually do, as Chief Wilmot said. Um, the point is to just do this one and get more data and get a sense so we can make a decision going forward. Now, to do that, if we do go to the next step, then you come up with a policy on what is it. And we have a draft policy. They, the police put one together and said, here's what the policy would look like. Now you look at that policy and say, well, what are the implications of the policy? Well, in, in this particular, the main criteria, there were other criteria like, you had to have tried certain things and you have to get buy-in on the streets, but basically everybody's going to want a speed bump on their block. So you'd get that buy-in. The two harder ones are you need a volume of traffic and you need a speed of traffic above the speed limit. In this particular case, the volume is satisfied, but the speed isn't. They're not actually driving fast enough under this policy. and. That's not reason to vote this down, but that's the cautionary tale of if we go down the road, then you're gonna have people here saying, well, we don't meet the policy, but we almost meet the policy. So then we'll be fighting over the policy. Do we bend the policy? Geez, it's just three miles per hour. And um, so no matter how much we try and construct the policy, I think we're still gonna run into challenges in, in how do we roll them out. Um, so I think that's the crux of it. There, there are a lot of other arguments to be made, but my, my sense is that it's a can of worms that I'm not willing to open, and I think we did a thorough job when we looked at it before. So I open it up to other comments. Uh, uh, I have a comment, Mr. President. Yes. Um, I, um, I think you left out one very important component uh, with this uh, addressing the speed on this road. Uh, and that, that is that we, uh, we were asked and we did provide um, the uh, radar assisted little signs that said, you know, you're going 35, you're going 45 for uh, probably at least two, two, two periods, two times. And I believe that there is currently a, a radar sign uh, on the street now. And the, uh, the indications that we seem to be getting from that machine, which counts, I didn't realize this, but it counts traffic and records the speed, and then we can download that to the system. So um, is, is the conclusion that you pointed out, that although there are a lot of cars on that, on that road at this last period, 1,000 a thousand cars a day, if you can believe that, um, they weren't going that fast. Uh, or they didn't, they didn't hit the threshold that 
you know, 85% going uh, above the speed limit there. So, I mean, I don't, I, I don't want to leave the public uh, with the impression that, that we've been sitting on our hands and doing nothing. We have been addressing the concerns of, of the residents on the street, I think. Uh, possibly not to their total sat satisfaction, because I, I believe, uh, you know, a, a certain number of people really just want the speed bumps or, or you know, yeah. or go home, you know, right. type of deal. So, okay. That's yeah, one other comment. point I forgot to make is the traffic's still there. So if you push it off one street, it's going to go on another street. You're not, they're just going to not, not drive. Now, what you want them to do is to go on the arterial roads. Um, but if they're backing up, their people are still going to find other routes. So a little bit of this is survival of the fittest. If, if one, you make it difficult to drive down one street, then the next block over is likely to get an increased volume. In this case, I think everybody will applaud this. We did the, the closest light that they're ba basically trying to avoid is Mill Road and Bethlehem Pike. And we, thanks to our head of public works, we lobbied PennDOT to make that light longer on Mill Road. So that actually helps with the backups. Um, people may not know that, but it will at least shorten it. And that, that is not an easy thing to accomplish with PennDOT. Of course, with the detours and another detour coming in, that area is very heavily trafficked. But that, that's just part of the calculus. Other questions or comments? Go ahead. Um, just to piggyback on what Commissioner Wilson said, as we were looking at Weiss Avenue, um, one of the things other than the radar sign, we did ask White Marsh Township to install additional stop signs on Mill Road, which at this point have seemed to slow the cars down from making that right-hand turn at a high rate at the top of Weiss Avenue. So just another Good. thing to throw in yeah. at what we've done so far. And we thank them for that. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I live on uh, Sunnybrook Road, which is a cut through street, and I have a, a four year old, an eight year old, and a 10 year old. And um, one of the challenges for us is the kids love to play outside. And it is, um, you know, it's, it's scary. It is very scary living on a cut through street where people uh, frequently speed through and you don't feel safe having your kids play in the front yard. And that's something that my wife and I deal with on a daily basis, where our kids come home from school on the weekends, that's our reality. So when these families came to our meetings on a monthly basis, they've been here routinely, uh, I feel their pain and I share their fear for their children's safety. Um, there isn't an easy answer to this. And, I, and frankly, I don't know what the answer is, but I know that we live at a time and in a society that seems to reward speed and quickness and getting there the fastest. Uh, the advent of um, technology like Waze that is taking people on routes uh, for really the first time ever, uh, taking them through neighborhoods. Uh, I think the advent of Waze has, has changed traffic patterns uh, in our township permanently. Um, I know that when I look around this township, and I see our most valuable assets, the places where our kids go to school, to pray, they're surrounded by speed bumps. So I recognize that that would slow down the response time if something happened at our high school, at a middle school, at the elementary school, but they're there because they work and they slow people down and they keep the kids safe. And I hear what the fire chief said, and I respectfully listened to it. I don't know what the answer is. But they're not speeding. He even said it's hard not speeding on the road. And I can go up and tell you, yeah, I don't know what the road is. Yep. On the road, yep. On the sidewalks there. Yep. Okay. I played in the backyard. I never played in the street. We didn't have sidewalks here. We walked down on the grass. Our parents taught us to play in the backyard. We didn't play in the front. Yep. So we're not talking about a speed issue because your study showed that there was no speed issue, correct? Correct. So we're not talking about speed issue here. You're just talking about the cars. We're talking speed. Cars are still going to come down the street. Yep. No matter what, whether they're going 25 or 50 miles an hour. But again, we're not talking about speed issue because your own study said that they weren't speed. So. Okay, well, we really shouldn't be taking yes. comments from the floor. You're right. And it, I, we're probably, it did say that, but it, they would still be slowed down. 
you know, the neighbors don't say, oh, they're all going the right speed. We hear about the Amazon trucks that's barreling down, and it's not a 0% thing. It just doesn't meet what would be a normal threshold. Um, but your points, we've talked about all this stuff. I have a comment, Mr. President, yes. if I may. Um, as you well, as this board wells knows, I was against the speed bumps. I think that first of all, it does. It's a hindrance to our uh, emergency services, uh, fire trucks, ambulance, etc. And I also believe that it's going to be a liability to the township in damages uh, caused by cars going over the bump at an excessive rate of speed. Even though that it is a lost cause, the frivolous lawsuits that we will generate has to be answered, and therefore that cost would also become, uh, you know, the township will have to worry about those additional costs. But I am a proponent of these are people that elected us to this board. And I, even though I am dead against it, we've talked to these residents several times, and we asked them, I asked them bluntly, the, uh, with the radar or the speed bumps. And they said that they would feel, they would like to see what the studies of the speed bumps would, would uh, bring about. So they, these are the residents that elected us to these seats. And I think that we have an obligation to those residents. And it is for that reasoning only that I am supporting uh, the speed bumps test because I'm, I'm not in favor of them, but our residents feel a need to have them. So, and for that way, that's my feeling uh, on it. They came to us with a concern. They elected us to this office. I think we have an obligation to them. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay, do we have other comments from the board? Okay, we will move to the vote. So this vote is, to, would be to suspend the, our policy for the sake of this one test. Um, all in favor of suspending the policy, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed say nay. 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 That's a 3-4 vote. The motion does not carry, so the policy remains intact. Um, we have made promises to the residents that they, we will keep them in the cycle for the radar sign and we will we are trying to get more radar signs so that that will be more available to them um, thank you and thank you guys for weighing in I do have one just comment about waves because waves is really the root of the problem which is and there's nothing you can do about that and my query is we were talking about Northwestern Avenue and I would bet you any dollars to donuts that Northwestern Avenue has a lot less traffic on it now because people used to think it was a through street and Waze doesn't send them down there. Um, that I'm not trying to reopen the other discussion. I'm sorry? Mm -hmm. If they've configured it so it was only on. Interesting. Yeah. So well, what if the Wawa moved? But I mean, they've certainly tried to move before. He, he makes it. He, yeah. Huh. <laughs> what? Chief makes it valid. Yeah, we know. Saying that, right. however, we're seeing what the effects of that are at the Luke Oil. They have two no left turn signs. Yeah, everybody just the ignores them. And yeah. everybody just the left hand turn out. Well, I think what George is actually talking it's about shutting is shutting it down. Is closing those drive. Take the curb cuts okay. out. Put put high curb in. So. That's what you're saying, right? Correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. They could still go. They just have to make two rights instead of one. But it would be, it would still change it. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I believe that I would say a lot of the traffic coming out of Wawa or the Voice Avenue makes that right and goes down Voice Avenue to not to um, a full Mill. Way yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Back around on the middle road to get out of the light. Mm -hmm. Getting out of the Right, and they're two difficult left turns they have to make that they avoid. It could be. Oh. Mr. President, can I say one more comment? Yes. And then I'll be quiet yes. on the subject. Um, I just, uh, for the record, think that this will continue to come up as development increases. It will increase in our township. It will increase around our township. We are a cut through township where, as people go from White Marsh trying to get to 309. Mm. And um, again, I, I completely understand your comment about uh, playing in the backyard. Um, I just want to reiterate to the board and to everybody else the challenges of being a parent today. 
and trying to get your kid not to be on a screen, not to be stuck on a phone, trying to get them outside, uh, it's a real challenge. And the fear that parents have on our streets is real. And it is a, it's a cultural thing. We want to move quick. We want to drive with our phone in our hands. I see it every day. And I just pray um, that nothing happens to my kids or anybody else. It, it, it is a very real thing. And I, I just think that the, and it, it, isn't, it isn't just a speed thing. It definitely is a volume issue. And as development continues to, to increase, and it will, um, these issues will continue to come up. And all I'm asking is that we don't have a blanket rule for just taking this, this off the table. Um, so I'm sure that we'll revisit at some point. But I, uh, and, and also I, I just want to reiterate that I, I did respectfully hear your, your issues. And, and I, do, I do hear them. Um, I just, I don't know what the answer is. Uh, I really don't. And we need to continue to monitor as things change and bumps get different and, and the mm -hmm. studies get different and we figure out, or maybe even the laws of limiting cut-throughs. Um, some of these streets you can finesse it by go making them one way. Um, that's been discussed. Mm -hmm. But we're not, we are where we are and um, we certainly share those do, concerns. Do we believe that the volume is increased because Valley Green Road is closed? Do we believe that's a part of the problem? Sure. I would agree with sure, that. Sure, I would think so. Oh, it sure is. Can yeah, we apply pressure to the county to do something there? Well, they can't. They're doing, they're moving full speed ahead, even though full speed's four years. But they are, they have plenty of pressure on them. So, but, so th but they can't my, move any quicker on that bridge. Why? Uh, okay, so to, to my question about can they move quicker, they take a bridge out on Pennsylvania Avenue. Right. Mm -hmm. They put a temporary bridge alongside of the bridge, and then they don't stop traffic. Right. Yeah. How I can we do that I on Pennsylvania know, yeah, Avenue, I, but we can't do that on Valley Green Road? I don't know. I mean, that's a PennDOT approach versus accounting. But I don't know the answer to that. I do know the reason it's I mean, taking so long. I'm not right. trying to. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. I'm not leaning on. No, and I've had some of these same conversations. I'm sure. And the reason it because people are like, why is it going to take four years? Whatever it is, the reason is the new bridge is not engineered and it needs to really be new and they kept trying to put it together with bubble gum and people kept they'd get it open again and then somebody else would crash into it and and the more that then it finally got closed and now the more they look at it the more they realize the challenge of the problem is i don't know the ability of a temporary bridge mm -hmm. i do know that it's a terrible problem and they're getting a lot of heat about it sure when it was, when yeah. it was closed you can absolutely notice the difference in traffic on the road. It was huge. Of course. I mean, I'm, yeah. That's mm -hmm. my only comment. Yeah, if there's a way we could do it, and I know that my friend would be happy because she has to commute <laughs> through it herself. So and she hits, it goes up Stanton, so right. she hits that. So, okay, um, Mike, you have another announcement here? Um, before I read the, the next portion, uh, concerning what we have through uh, conversations with the neighbors since Monday night, um, the majority of them being in favor of the speed hump test, uh, the majority do see the benefit and the positive side of the uh, speed enforcement signs when they are on uh, Weiss Avenue. So um, I'll read the, the motion first and then I'd like to make a comment on the uh, timetable for that or should I do that after should I wait for comments after a motion on what what I feel make your motion is a necessary time frame for what for a recommendation of when the sign should be up and taken out up and down oh we're gonna do a motion on that yeah. it's not on the agenda can well, go ahead so this is the uh, flashing radar activated speed I move that the Board of Commissioners authorize the purchase of two additional flashing radar activated speed limit signs for deployment throughout Springfield Township by the Springfield Township Police Department. That is my motion. I would second that. Okay. Um, we've talked about this and we've made promises that we would do this. Um, I don't have a problem with it. What I don't want to do and we're not doing is to promise one block they're going to get it more than another block. Or the, but the police need to have the discretion on how to do it. And part of what's going on at Weiss that I look forward to is the research and conventional wisdom is that you're actually better off with the sign coming and going than having the sign there all the time. 
that people notice it more when it's away and back. So that to just, it's obviously cheaper too if you're rotating them around. And that's something we can play with on that street. And the signs now capture that data. So you can get, we'd have to obviously have something there to capture the data. I think we are allowed to use radar to just capture data. We just can't use it for enforcement to try and learn more about what's, what's maximized on the sign. But I think that we were going to deal with this in the budget, but we can do it as a, as a motion. Can I make one comment? Yes. The, the motion needs to say how much we're spending or needs to provide um, a methodology for uh, uh, yeah, our sense was they were the around three thousand. You want to put like an eight thousand dollar cap on that, or well, it depends on that. how we're going to uh, obtain. The, they're each, uh, yeah, I think oh, an eight thousand dollar cap would give you a for little two. leeway. Okay. Yeah. And do we do we have to say any more than that for process? Or no, I mean Don knows. I guess how it's, he's, how he's authorizing money, and it'll be however law allows it. Any other questions or comments? I'm, I'm fine with it. Okay, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, saying nay. Please record a unanimous vote. Okay, Mike. We've got one more. Don't you have the coffee with the cop? Yeah, I have two more. The two more announcements regarding the police. I am pleased to announce that on Saturday, October 13th, from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., both the Springfield Township and White Marsh Township Police Departments will be hosting coffee with a cop at the Giant Food Store, 1874 Bethlehem Pike, Flowertown. This is an opportunity for residents to join their neighbors and police officers for coffee and conversations. There are no agendas or speeches, just a chance to ask questions, voice concerns, and get to know the officers in the neighborhood. Next, I'd also would like to announce the Springfield Township Police Department is implementing a new program known as Springfield Township Safe Watch Program. As many residents and businesses have taken extra security measures to monitor their homes and properties by installing outdoor security cameras, the police department is looking for residents and business owners who are willing to share video from these cameras with the police department in the event it captures anything of investigative significance. Participants are under no obligation to give the police the video, and the participants will only be contacted as a part of a criminal investigation. The program is not invasive, as no live feed access will be sought by the police department. Please secure additional information through the Springfield Township Police Department Facebook page, or contact the police department during the business day at 215-836-1606. That concludes my report for this evening. Thank you, Commissioner Maxwell. Finally, we move to the Chairman of the Zoning Committee, Commissioner Cobb. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, first, the, uh, the Zoning Hearing Board will be uh, have their monthly meeting on Monday, October 22nd at 7 p.m. Uh, in this room at the Springfield Township Building. Where we're going to hear uh, two petitions. The first being from uh, Jennifer Greenfield and Christopher Klein of 1509 Allen Road, Orland, PA, 19075, uh, are seeking variances from section 114-54.B to reduce the side yard setback from 12 feet to 7 feet and to reduce the aggregate side yard setback from 35 feet to 17 feet in order to, to, con to construct a detached garage uh, adjacent to their home in the residence A district. And the second petition that will be heard is on from Lorenz Properties LLC of uh, 175 Roberts Avenue, Glenside, PA. They're requesting the following zoning relief for the property at 400 Bethlehem Pike in Air 9. Um, number one, a special exception uh, per section 114-71.D permitting three residential units within a multiple dwelling and a variance to reduce the required minimum lot area per family for a multiple dwelling from 5,000 square feet to 47, 33 square feet per family. And two, in the alternative, a variance from section 114-81 to allow three residential units on the property is sought. And this property is located in the residence D district. And that's all, Mr. President. Okay, I have a question on that for the solicitor. This, the Lawrence property, came up a couple years ago and I believe we were in opposition to it. I know we were in opposition to four. Um, and five. this, right, they wanted more. And this this version is what we 
asking for back then. Do yes. we need to undo that, or are we okay? Because it's been a long time. Or we did that. I think we did. Did we do that last month? That okay. Right. Yes. I know we talked about it. Okay. Well, that's easy. Thank you. So finally, what we're going to do is that little sleight of hand. I promised. Um, at this point, I will accept a motion to recess from the October 2018 business meeting and convene a public hearing to receive public comment on a proposed ordinance to amend the no impact home based businesses and residential zoning district section of the zoning code. That is, uh, I will take, make that motion. Do we have a second? second? Any questions or comments? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 So now, I'm going to read this page and then we can move forward. Um, the purpose of the hear hearing. The public hearing is being held in compliance with section 609 of the Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code to consider a zoning code text amendments to regulate no impact home based businesses. The legal requirements associated with the public hearing have been met by publishing a notice in of the public hearing in the September 23 and 30, 2018 issue, issues of the Ambler Gazette. In addition, public hearing notices were posted in the township building and library. Copies of the full text ordinance were available in the township building, the library, the offices of Montgomery Publishing, and the Montgomery County Law Library. Summary, the ordinance amends the code of Springfield Township chapter 114 zoning article 4 section 114-41 to repeal section 114-41 F1 and amend further amending article 2 section 114-21 to modify the definition of no impact home based business and further amending article 13 to add a new section 114-139.2 regulations governing no impact home based businesses and I will say my opinion that these were mainly housekeeping and trying to make things flow better we weren't really trying to and, and some updating but we weren't trying to create something new or reinvent the wheel here which is probably why we have no public comment on it uh, Planning Commission reviews the Springfield Township Planning Commission in a letter dated October 3rd 2018 it was noted that the Township Planning Commission discussed the proposed ordinance at their meeting of October 2nd 2018 and voted unanimously to recommend enactment of the amended no impact home based business ordinance Montgomery County Planning Commission on October 29th the Montgomery County Planning Commission was invited to review and make comments on the draft zoning code amendments while the County Planning Commission participated in the review process of the Township Planning Commission, the county opted not to provide separate comments on the amendment. So at this point, are there any questions or comments from the board? Are there any questions or comments from the audience? Mm -hmm. There being none, I would entertain a motion to close this public hearing related to amending the no impact home based business ordinance and reconvene the business meeting. I will make that motion. Do we have a second? second. second. Any questions or comments? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Okay, we're now back. I told you that would be quick. Um, I have to find the motion. So now we are on the last item of the agenda. Um, we've had the hearing, and now I'm about to make a motion that we accept them. So I move that the Board of Commissioners enact Ordinance 956, an ordinance that amends the Springfield Township Code Chapter 114 Zoning Article 4, Section 114-41, to repeal subsection 114-41F1, and further amending Article 2, Section 114-21, to modify the definition of no impact home-based business, and further amending Article uh, 13, to add a new section, subsection 114-139.2, Two, regulations governing no impact home based businesses. That is my motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any questions or comments? I have a, I have a question. Uh oh. <laughs> is there a license required? No. 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 Is there any fees or charges required? No. No. Thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Please record a unanimous vote. And now our final matter is, is there any public comment at this point? Yes, and please go to the mic so he can catch you on TV. Giuseppe Matticelli, 
uh, <coughs> Ward 72. Uh, I had some public comment. Throughout my work as being a MMJ, multimedia journalist, and also an investigative journalist, um, recently this past month, actually on the 25th of uh, September, I was, uh, as I was doing my work, particularly in the weather, uh, I was approached by a resident on Hunter's Lane. And she expressed an opinion that I highly agree with and that I observed over throughout my years of being a resident here in the township, uh, where at the intersection of Church Road and at Heather Road, there is a major problem of stormwater not being properly um, disposed of into the sewage uh, drains. And the reason that I happening of my observations is Church Road is not a, at this point of time, it's not a flat surface road. Uh, you have the road going up to each other. One side's on angle and the other side's on angle as well. So when the stormwater runoff is coming from, uh, from Heather Road, it's going downhill. It's collecting in that basin there when there is a, a drain there, but it's on the other side of the road, on Church Road. Uh, it has nowhere to go. Uh, I mean, d during light rains, it really does not cause much of a problem, but during heavy, severe flash flooding, and during those winter months that you have major snowfall and it melts, you have that collection of water there that's, uh, you know, somewhat a health hazard, especially during the winter months because you have to worry about mosquitoes, the mosquitoes being um, flying around there, you know. Uh, there's well test uh, to prove the fact that mosquitoes like to be inhabited with water. So I, I find that as being a problem. Um, I really do and I would appreciate if this could be looked into for the city manager, uh, Mr. Berger, uh, of re-evaluating this issue. I know there's multiple other areas in the township that most likely has this, but if this issue could be evaluated, I would appreciate it. Uh, my we, can, we can certainly do that, and particularly figure out if things aren't working right. Or the roads can't be flat, or else no. they'd be all icy. But they can be raked differently, or it could be something's not draining right. Or yeah, you know, at least to be evaluated. My second public comment is uh, somewhat piggybacking on Honorable Commissioner Shams. Uh, wording and comment about the resurfacing. Uh, I personally had the road, road resurfaced on uh, toll. You know, I watched that went down. You know, I watched the surrounding resurfacing went down. I find um, that everything went well, but I would appreciate in the future when if this would happen, uh, where it's well advised to the residents that. They cannot leave uh, certain parts of the day out of their driveway um, at all, you know, there are, because these big vehicles come in and they take a, about a good four hours just to move the vehicles. And not only it creates a problem of a resident wanting to get out of their driveway with their vehicle, it creates a major, major uh, health hazard of where you can't have the fire trucks coming in. You can't have the emergency medical services coming in. You can't have police. You can't have any medical services coming in. Now, I know this is for a short period of time that, the, you, you know, but that really should have been looked at, you know, because you have a whole road being jammed up throughout the whole day and throughout a good portion of it. You can't go anywhere. It's obstructing the road. So that really should have been evaluated more and considered before doing this project. Uh, besides from that, I have no other public comment. I greatly appreciate you taking my public comment. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other public comment at this time? I have one, Mr. President. Oh, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to announce to the township that Arcadia University is bringing in its first president who was a person of color, uh, Dr. Uh, Ajar Nair. Uh, we will be welcoming him in to not only to Arcadia, but to the area this Saturday, so this Saturday morning. So 
If you have any free time, please stop through and welcome Dr. Nair. Arcadia is a great uh, educational institution in our area, and uh, a lot of our residents are students there. So, thank you. Here, here. Thanks for bringing that up. Any other public comment? I have one. Well, look at how public yeah. the board I'm is. I'm done for tonight. After this, but uh, <laughs> first thing, uh, community day. Extend the thanks and the job well done to the community uh, committee. It was a wonderful attended event, and I think it went well. And each year it seems to grow and grow. And, um, yes. And then lastly, but uh, Weiss Avenue, um, I'd like to make a recommendation that you know, the police ultimately can uh, look into it, but for the speed sign on Weiss Avenue, um, maybe two weeks on, two weeks off, one week on, but at least up for two weeks throughout the month until we see that the traffic goes back to normal at some point when the bridge in Stenton Avenue and all this you know, chaos mm -hmm. around it subsides. Mm -hmm. Uh, like I said, the residents seem to think that it is effective, and let's see how effective. Okay, well, we can pass that on. So, any other comments? Make a motion, we adjourn. Yes, okay, we have a second. Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned. We're adjourned. We're adjourned. <laughs> Thank you very much. Congratulations on your recommendation. Not so you're not taking the tablet?